Gloria Strode and welcome to Straightforward. Today we have our one and only Director of Elections and Registration, Nancy Boren. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, we're almost at that time where we really need to put all the information out there for those that need to register to vote, for those that might be interested in running for office. They need to know the who, what, when, where, how, and why, so we don't run into issues down the road at deadline. Yes. So your office does a lot of things. I first want you to share with our audience all the things that you all do, and then we need to address those issues. So we're involved in voter registration. Mm -hmm. That's our main component. That's what we do. We maintain the list of re registered voters for our county. Uh, we also conduct all elections and we do the qualifying for nonpartisan candidates as well as the filing of campaign disclosures and those things that candidates need to run. Okay, so what would be the nonpartisan? Because mm -hmm. people get things confused if this the Senate, the national, the local, exactly mm -hmm. what are those races? So nonpartisan races would be your city council, your mayor, your school board, and all of your judges. The other offices, like sheriff, are partisan offices, uh -huh. and they would run in a primary in May. But nonpartisan uh, or offices are elected in the May election. Okay, and so if people are interested mm -hmm. in being a registered voter, mm -hmm. then we need to get them moving forward on that. What do they need to become a registered voter, and when will that deadline? Okay. So if you are not a registered voter, or mm -hmm. if you're not sure whether you're a registered voter, you can go to my voter page. Um, it's a voter page that shows you your information, your information as far as your districts and what precinct you're registered in. You can just Google my voter page. And that's you're, a state page. That is a, a state Secretary page. of State. Yes, okay. it is. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have access to a computer, you can call our office. We are the elections office, and it's six. 706-653-4392. Mm -hmm. um, we can provide you with that information to determine whether or not you're registered. Also, when you go get your driver's license, mm -hmm. there's a new um, thing in place. If you get your driver's license, you have to opt out of being a registered voter. Really? It used to be just the opposite. Yes. You had to opt in, in to want to, the, to register at mm -hmm. that time. Right. So now you have to opt out. Right. Okay. And here's the really good part. Mm -hmm. If you change your address and you were already a registered voter, mm -hmm. you might respond no to the question, do you want to register to vote? Because you're already registered. Right. But, but And so it wouldn't generate a change of address to us. Right. So now it'll generate a change of address to us and we'll get that information which has been a little bit of a source of confusion for some right. voters. But so. it's really helpful on election day because we have that confusion we every do. year. I mean, you've been here several times. Mm -hmm. You're on every media outlet explaining to people mm -hmm. what we need to be doing before the day election day. Right. And sometimes people are at the wrong precinct. They are. Right. So how, and I know you have a lot on your fabulous website, and mm -hmm. of course we'll be showing that, but they can actually go to the website at Yes, again, that's my voter page, right. and you just Google my voter page, Georgia, uh -huh. and it'll bring up your sample ballot, it'll bring up your precinct location, all of your district representatives, basically anything, any information that you as a voter in Georgia would need. Right, and there was some confusion um, in one election because people didn't understand they didn't get to vote for everyone. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that everybody gets to vote on, and mm -hmm. then some things are specific to your district. Correct. Right. So, yeah. So you have district representatives, uh -huh. and let's talk about council. You have districts one, two, three, four, and five. They are all district representatives, so right. they represent a, a small portion of the county. You have your at-large representatives, which are council districts nine and ten. Our council district nine is up in 2018, uh -huh. so we'll, every voter will be able to vote on that. Um, we are also electing the odd. Uh, council districts. So uh -huh. if Council District 1 is in your district, right. you'll be voting for Council District 1 and uh -huh. 9. Okay, so if the, it's the odd years mm -hmm. in 2018, mm -hmm. and that is for Council and School Board. So Council and School Board alternate. Uh -huh. When we are electing odd Council, we are electing even School Board. Okay, so, so there, it's a balance there. It is. So we won't have people moving out of positions at the same time. Right, okay. so they alternate. So we'll mm -hmm. be electing odd council seats and even school board seats as well as the at-large at -large. school board. Okay, mm -hmm. so people need to know 
what their district is. Mm -hmm. So on election day, and we can find that out now, who's mm -hmm. representing you with the school board, who's representing you on city council. So on election day, they won't have confusion with your staff and the poll workers mm -hmm. that somebody's name is not on their ballot. And don't assume that just because you see a political campaign sign that that person is in your district. Right. You would need to verify with us or either through the maps that are available to you to uh -huh. determine what your district is okay. based on your address. Okay. So now when we register to vote, things have changed and evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. What do people need to become a registered voter in Muskogee County? First, they need to fill out the form. Mm -hmm. If it is the first time they are registering in the state of Georgia, they will need to include a copy of their photo ID, a government issued photo ID. Mm -hmm. If they've registered before and gone through our whole process, then they would not need that photo ID and they can just fill out the form with their signature and all of the information required. Okay, so the first time, if you're registering for the first time, we have some high school seniors yes. that will be turning 18 before right. next year or by the election of next mm -hmm. year, uh, then they need to have the photo ID and it needs to be state. Mm -hmm. It cannot be the high school or any of that. It can be their high school ID. Okay. It can be a government issued ID. Okay, so, so schools would be included in that. Unless sure. you attend a private school. If you attend a private school, it is not considered a government funded school, so you would need a different type of ID. Okay, so yes. if they're a freshman at CSU, then the CSU ID will do just fine. Absolutely. All right, and see, those are all the important things that we mm -hmm. wanna make sure we let people know before the day of election. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go to our sponsors and we'll be right back. Okay. We'll be right back after work from some of our sponsors. Straight Forward is brought to you by Chalk by Quincy introduces excellence redefined, tying pieces of the finest technology, luxury, and class with tons of style at chalklifestyle.com. Renal Associates LLC, a team of physicians dedicated to excellent kidney care with five convenient locations to serve you. Stark Avenue, Columbus, Bradley Park, Columbus, Lafayette Parkway, LaGrange, East Burkhalter Avenue, Buena Vista, and Spring Street in Warm Springs. The Framing Factory and Art Gallery, specializing in quality art and framing for all your needs. Original etchings, limited editions, and prints. Call Carlton Dickey today at 706-324-3823 or visit the Art Gallery at 1325 17th Street in Columbus. Walmart's reason for supporting Thurgood Marshall College Fund is simple. We like to win. And we have been given a lot of exposure to some, to some incredible talent. And we also believe that it's a part of our responsibility to the community to give back. This is a great opportunity to do both. It's been a wonderful experience for us through the years. We've appreciated our partnership. We believe in return on investment and we have definitely had a remarkable return. Come meet your new best friend at Paws Humane. Adopting from your shelter makes sense. You get a great friend checked by our vet. They're fixed, all shots, microchipped, all ready to make you and your family's life better. 4900 Milton Road, Columbus. Paul's Humane. Come meet your new best friend at Paul's Humane. straightforward. I'm continuing my conversation with the awesome and knowledgeable Nancy Boren. Nancy, we have so much information to cover. We were just saying before we went to the break about our college students, yes. but there was another very important fact that you shared with me that we really need to make sure that we get the word out. So if you are a college student and you do not want to make your college address your official address, mm -hmm. then you would need to request an absentee ballot from your home county. From your home county? Right. Okay. You would register in your home county, mm -hmm. probably where your parents live, and then you would request an absentee ballot from them. If you register at the university or the college that you are attending, it will pull your voter registration from your home county 
to your college county, and that has confused some college students. Right, because we can't vote in two places. Right. Right, so if they are going to continue at their home of record, yes. then they need to apply for the absentee ballot. Yes. But if they decide that they're gonna move and go to the University of California and they're gonna live there forever, then they might want to register there yes. if they don't intend on coming back home. That's right. All right, so we need to make sure that we're clear on that. What about our military? This is a big military mm -hmm. community. How does that work? It is a military community. And so whatever the military person decides is their home of record, mm -hmm. that is where they would maintain their voter registration. So whatever state, if they want it to be Georgia, it can be Georgia, mm -hmm. but their home of record is where they would request their absentee ballot. Okay, so they would be getting the absentee ballot. Yes. Okay, and so for those that are on duty outside of the country, mm -hmm. We make sure that they get a chance to vote too, right? Absolutely, okay. we do. Um, we actually, they can mail or they can mail the request electronically, and then we send them their ballot electronically. Really? We follow it with a mail ballot, and if we're able to get that back, then we count that mail ballot. But if not, we use that electronic ballot. We remake it onto a paper ballot with the vote really? review panel, and then we cast that ballot. Presidential election night, I took a picture of our vote review panel right. uh, steadily at work. It, 3 a.m. I know you're, you're always there at old dark 30. It's right. like from one day to the next day and you know you're going to stay right. there till every vote is counted right. and that's so very important. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on to those that might be interested in running for a political office. Mm -hmm. There is some confusion sometimes and what they have the word on the street is not necessarily what the rule is. Mm -hmm. So share with those that might be interested in running for an upcoming school board or upcoming council seats. Okay. what they should be doing. So the dates for qualifying for 2018 for the local seats are March 5th through the 9th. It begins uh -huh. at 9 a.m. on the 5th and it ends at 12 noon on the 9th. Um, you would register, you would come to our office if you are registering for a local office such as uh -huh. council, mayor, or school board. You would fill out paperwork and you would pay the qualifying fee. Qualifying fee is set by council in the uh -huh. beginning of next year in January, and it'll be 3% of annual salary for the office for which you are wanting to qualify. Okay, so counselors. 3% of the annual salary for the office that you are qualifying to, you're gonna run for that seat. Yes. So it's not a blanket amount. It, 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 fluctuates. It does. Right. And council actually sets that qualifying fee. So mm -hmm. for example, a, a entering council would make $14,000 a year. So qualifying fee, 3% of that would be $420. So if you want to run for council, you need $420. It's easy to remember because that's my birthday, 420. By 12 <laughs> noon on March the 9th. <laughs> By 12 noon on March the 9th. Right. And then if you want to run for mayor, it's it's again three percent of that percent of that annual salary, salary. and okay. I don't know right off the top of okay, my head but that's what that okay. is. People can do the math because right. if they want to run for mayor, they should be able to do three percent or whatever that is, mm -hmm. and they should be doing their own research. Mm -hmm. Okay, those that are running for state offices, mm -hmm. where do they go? All right. So if you are running for House Representative, Senator. Um, governor, uh -huh. Secretary of State, all of that qualifying will be done in Atlanta at the Capitol um, during that same time period, okay. March the 5th through the 9th, and they would handle all of that qualifying as well as the state uh -huh. would set that qualifying fee. Typically, you can find that information on the Secretary of State's webpage. That's what I want you to say. Mm -hmm. That is not uh, Nancy Boren no. and the team of Muscogee County's right. responsibility. Right. If you're interested in those offices, you should be looking at the Secretary of State mm -hmm. website or you should be calling them. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. your people are very helpful. They all right. try to point people in the right direction, but sometimes you all are so busy that right. people don't really have that much time to kind of coach people through. And, and a lot of those offices are partisan, meaning Democrat and Republican, mm -hmm. but the Democratic and the Republican parties typically qualify at the Capitol. They just have separate spaces, so you can make that one trip if you are interested in Okay, and, and, and one trip do. Mm -hmm. Now here locally, uh, we have a certain qualifying period for when it's partisan. Mm -hmm. The Democrats and the Republicans, but I think is there a lapse in time if you're independent? Is it an extra or it's a different mm -hmm. qualifying time? There is a different qualifying time for an independent candidate because uh -huh. again, they would not appear on the May ballot. Right. They would only appear on the November ballot. Okay. So the qualification time period for an independent candidate will be different. In 2018, we will not have any local races uh -huh. that will be partisan races. 
so uh, there will be no partisan qualifying in 2018. It'll mm -hmm. be, be back in 2020. Oh, okay. And that's all these things that came mm -hmm. up before. We want to make sure that we get the facts and not the myths and mm -hmm. not the rumors. Right. Right. And so um, if they're trying to run for state, once mm -hmm. again, before we go to our break, they need to be dealing with the Secretary of State mm -hmm. website or call them. Yes. If it's a local race, school board, council, or any of those mayor, then they can ask Nancy Boren's office, yes. all of those things. Yes. If whatever that office you want to run for locally is 3% of whatever that salary is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it Okay, is. so those are the hard facts. Yes. Those will not change. Those will not change. All right, so what we're going to do right now, we're going to go to our final break to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Okay, we'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. <laughs> Straight Forward is brought to you by Warrior Outreach. Contact Command Sergeant Major Retired Sam Rhodes or Kathy Rhodes. Freedom Printing for all of your designer printing needs. Gunboat Plaza, Suite 18. Thai Thai Cuisine, the area's only authentic Thai restaurant. Open for lunch and dinner Monday through Saturday. Located in the Village Green Shopping Center on the 280 Bypass in Phoenix City. Progressive Funeral Home, family owned and operated since 1952. The George Ford legacy of high standards continues today in the compassionate and professional services provided. A touch of dignity for those who care. Progressive Funeral Home, 4235 St. Mary's Road. Trusted by generations. Best Care, transforming minds and bodies leading the way in the latest techniques of medical weight loss and wellness. Certified in family medicine and bariatrics, Dr. Blunt is ready to assist in the transformation of your mind and body. Call today, 706-221-6477 or visit bestcarecolumbus.com. East Alabama Endocrinology, educating and caring for those living with diabetes in Alabama and Georgia. 1400 Bradley Lake Boulevard, 3320 Skyway Drive, Suite 602, Opelika. Take charge of diabetes and live your best life. Vanessa Jackson's District 3 Successful Scholars Program, supporting students in achieving academic excellence, outstanding citizenship, positive social and cultural growth, believing in success for kids. History is important because it shows where you're coming from and where you're going. Type 2 diabetes is something that runs in my family, which means I'm at risk. In fact, one in three American adults are at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. And knowing this, if I do nothing, that family history becomes my family's future. And my family is too important to me for that. Take the risk factor assessment today at AskGreenNo.com. I wish I would shower every once in a while. I was wondering if maybe you wanted to hang out this weekend. Uh, sorry, I don't think it's gonna work out. <laughs> <laughs> little by little, it all adds up. And welcome back to Straight Forward. I'm enjoying this conversation with the awesome Nancy Boren because we wanna make sure that we get you all the facts on elections, registration, anything you need to know. Okay, Nancy, for those that might be confused, mm -hmm. if there's an issue that comes up, you have a board, it's a very diverse board. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that the street committee might say is not necessarily a fact because you have a team of people outside of your staff okay. that's working, that have you know a different set of eyes than mm -hmm. yours. So share that with our audience. Um, yes, we have five members on our board. One is a Democratic appointee, mm -hmm. one is a Republican appointee, and th then three appointees by council. Um, we have three minorities on our board, um, one white female and one white male. Okay. Um, I do not vote in any of the ongoings of the board, mm -hmm. and so I just implement policy that the board puts together. Right, and so if there's an issue that comes up mm -hmm. that might something might be in question, it's not a Nancy and her staff decision. It goes to that board, it the five-member board. Yes. And again, there's one appointee from the Democratic Party, one appointee from the Republican Party, that is and correct. then three appointed by council. Right. All right. So then that really puts 
the responsibility somewhere else. Your primary role is to make sure that we're having an election, that it's fair, and that everything is running smooth. And that we have everything staffed, we have adequate poll workers, we have adequate equipment, uh -huh. we provide opportunities for voting both early and by mail. Uh -huh. For those who can't come in person, that we're able to mail them a ballot. We broadened our early voting opportunities. We now vote for, you know, beginning of early voting to the end of early really? voting. Really? And we, at one time, we didn't have that. We did. I've been voting a long time. Right. And so you've added weekends to make we it more convenient. The hours are longer. Uh, you have many precincts. Uh, we had some precincts changes, and then you mm -hmm. have some others that you're going to be changing because mm -hmm. I know we have the National Infantry Museum mm -hmm. and that was kind of out the way. Mm -hmm. So you all are looking at doing something different with that? We are. We, okay. we received a petition from 25 voters uh -huh. asking us to look at or asking the board to look at moving the National Infantry Museum closer into town. Uh -huh. The board did look at it and we've identified another site okay. um, for that polling location. The, vote, the board will vote on it affirmatively or either not to do it in uh -huh. the first meeting of December, uh -huh. be the first Thursday in December at two o'clock. Uh -huh. And it's the Catholic Church that they are looking at moving the um, voting to. And we're really excited about that opportunity. Right, and I think that will help people with getting, because we are very mm -hmm. proud of the Infantry Museum, they but are. it's kind of out there and right there near Fort Benning. And uh, sometimes transportation is an issue. And it so was. it's very good that the board would, you know, just take a look at that and you've identified a place. Mm -hmm. It was so. a long walk for voters from the parking lot to the entrance it's of the National Infantry Museum. Mm -hmm. So we looked at Our Lady of Lords. They are actually going to open up the old school that was there and right. let us use that for voting. There's adequate parking and it's closer into town, closer to bus routes, mm -hmm. closer to where the people actually live. And the other thing, and I've attended this class, where if you want to be a deputy registrar, mm -hmm. then how does that work? So if you want to be a deputy registrar, you contact our office. We have training periodically, uh -huh. um, more often, obviously, during an election year, but we have training even now. You attend that training, you learn just some basics about what to do with voter registration, how to handle the forms, what information is needed, and you're uh -huh. given a deputy registrar card. Right. And because it's people's personal identifiable information, I used to work for the Census Bureau, mm -hmm. you have to be careful you when do. you're handling people's information. Right. You can't go and do, uh, say, a registration at your church and then just sit the form somewhere mm -hmm. and leave them in your car and things like that. So right. you're training us on all of that mm -hmm. when we go through the class. Yes, people are hesitant to put their personal information on a piece of paper in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so secondly, you have to assure them that you're gonna handle that information and that piece of paper properly. And third, that it gets to us, mm -hmm. that we actually get it. So if people uh, want to do this, maybe churches mm -hmm. or the other civic groups, how much does this cost? Is it free? This is one of your services. Mm -hmm. uh, this is free. It free. Is, yes, it's free. <laughs> we even give you forms if right. you ask for them. Those are and free. Yeah, yes. the training is free and mm -hmm. you simply call our office. You can talk with Jeanette James. She will set up your deputy registrar training mm -hmm. and typically she'll come to you if you ask for it, but often we have them in our office too. So we're very flexible there. And that's, that's really wonderful. And that's, the, the, that's one of the most fabulous things about your team. You know, mm -hmm. they're very helpful. Mm -hmm. So again, before we run out of time, if people are interested and they want to be able to vote for the spring, then we need to have them registering now mm -hmm. and they need the photo ID. I just need for you to sum that up. Yes. Those that want to qualify, they should be doing something different. So if you can give us those timelines once again. Right. So the deadline to register to vote for the May 22nd primary is April the 23rd. Okay. We will start early voting on April the 30th and you'll have various opportunities to do that from uh -huh. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday both weekends during that early voting period. If you want to run for office, you need to determine what the qualifying fee is, uh -huh. what those requirements are as far as, as far as a candidate, and what forms you have to fill out to begin collecting that money. Right. You have to fill out a declaration of intention. You have to have a separate bank account. And all of those forms are available to you either on the Ethics Commission website, which is ethics.ga.gov. Which or is a state. It is, a, right? a, again, okay. the state. Or mm -hmm. you can come to our office and we have all those forms available for you. Okay, and the people need to start off on the right foot with that. Yes. They really do. They do. Because that's very important and you can get into trouble with that. Right. Right, and so when they have to, 
after they've collected money, there are certain times they have to do reports to your office. They do. They mm -hmm. have to report to us periodically based on how much money they've raised, how much they intend to raise, and then how close it is to an election, and as well as the amount of the contribution that they've mm -hmm. received. If it's really close to the election and you receive a $1,000 contribution, you have to report to us within 24 hours. So there are different requirements. Mm -hmm. We do train you so you don't have to be worried about that. And we remind you with emails as well as a copy of the form that you need to fill out so that you are, remain in compliance. Exactly. So you just can't decide you want to be in the race and not learn how to do the accountability and the paperwork part. Right. Because that's a part of being a responsible candidate. And if we're not doing that, then we don't know, and this is me speaking as a citizen, how we're going to have you representing us because mm -hmm. that's the first test. It is. Right. So anything they need to know about running for the state office, they go to the Secretary of State. Yes. All right. Now we can register. We have to opt out at the DMV. Yes. Okay. The driver's We're so excited bureau. About and that, that. <laughs> if there's an address change, then they will notify your office. They will. And all of that stuff helps on election day. It keeps you from being so tired and run ragged, yeah. trying to help people troubleshoot things because folks are in the wrong precinct. They changed their address, they didn't, and so they're not appearing on the list. So there are some things that have happened mm -hmm. since last time we voted that there it's are. gonna help everything run smoother for you and your team. And one key thing, okay. if you ever go to the poll and your name is not on the list, but you know you are a registered voter, ask for a provisional ballot. Provisional ballots that catch all for everything. Okay, so. and at the end of the night, those are the ones you're looking at at Dark 30 no, those are the ones that we have three days after election day to look at so that we certify the election three days later. The ones oh, okay. that we're looking at are the military ballots that we have. Oh, okay. So everybody gets counted. Yes. Everybody gets yes. counted. Okay, so tell them where you're located and how they can reach you. We are located in the City Services Center at 3111 Citizens Way mm -hmm. or 3000 Macon Road, center of, center of town. Mm -hmm. Our telephone number is 706-653-4392 and we have an elections website where mm -hmm. you can go and find information, previous election returns, basically anything that you need to know. Okay, well, I thank you so much. You've done an outstanding job. We're lucky to have you there. No, we're really blessed, not lucky, because you are there, you're a hard worker, and I trust your work. Thank so you. thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. All right. This has been Straightforward. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Until next time, be blessed. <laughs>